Tonight, students are speaking out about bias going on in Portland schools. That says there is new data highlighting racial equity gaps when it comes to discipline. That's right, Liz, and there was a lot covered in this meeting, but perhaps what was most interesting was that data showing students of color are disproportionately disciplined when compared to their white counterparts. Here in Portland, our black students make up about 8% of our student enrollment and yet they're accounting for over 24% of referrals and exclusionary discipline. The presentation included updated data on disciplinary action, showing students of color receive higher rates of referrals, suspensions, or other disciplinary actions. With black students disciplined at a rate of 3.5 times, Native American students 2.5 times, and Latinx students disciplined at a rate of 1.2 times the rate of their white counterparts. All right, guys, so for today's video, we're going to be talking about a story that's kind of making waves in the news right now. And it's not so much based off the stats that you heard in the opening clip, but more so what they're going to be doing going forward to deal with those uh, so-called statistics. And of course, um, you know, this is coming out of Portland and an article was written titled Portland Teachers Contract Could Tackle Disproportionate Discipline Against Students of Color. Now, I guess with the union and the teachers have come to some sort of agreement that teachers going forward when disciplining a specific student have to now factor in their race, their gender, how they identify, you know, LGBTQ type stuff, uh, trauma that they could have, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The 14th Amendment's dead. The Equal Protection Clause ensures that every American citizen is treated fairly and equally in the eyes of the law. Nor shall any state deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Now, the 14th Amendment was necessary during Reconstruction to make sure black Americans were treated equally. And the law has been interpreted to cover skin color, gender, religion, nationality, because society cannot function if laws apply to certain groups and not to others. And just like Democrats opposed ending slavery, today's left still insists on discriminating based on race. After a months long strike, Portland's teachers union hammered out a new contract. And the contract says teachers can discipline white students differently than black students and black students differently than Hispanic students. So if a student is disruptive in class, the schools must, quote, take into consideration the impact of issues related to the student's trauma, race, gender identity, presentation, sexual orientation, disability, social, emotional learning, and restorative justice. No, I don't know about you, but if I had a bingo card of wokeness, I think I would have, you know, nailed that bingo card 100%. Because essentially what you're doing is you're giving people a free pass to just be shitty individuals and now they can get away with it because of one of these criterias or a multitude of these criterias. And now instead of addressing maybe the core problem as to why 8% are responsible for a quarter of the disciplinary actions, which most likely is due to or, or virtually no discipline at home, you think the way to go about it is implementing some sort of anti-racist policy where instead of having the teachers doing what they're doing to hold individuals accountable for their bad behavior, now you're giving them a pass to continue this bad behavior with even less of a consequence simply because of the color of their skin. It doesn't quite make sense. Should the color of your skin matter? If you behave badly in class, well, Portland Public Schools must now consider race or gender identity when dishing out discipline to students who act up. According to a new collective bargaining agreement reached between the district and its teachers union, educators must develop, quote unquote, a support plan for the disruptive students that will, quote, take into consideration the impact of issues related to the students' trauma, race, gender identity, presentation, sexual orientation and restorative justice as appropriate for the student. When I did not respond to my principal and teacher after recess coming in on time, <laughs> they didn't take into account any of these things in second grade when I got paddled. Did you ever take into account any of this stuff when you were a judge, when you were meeting out 
I could these care, kind of factors. I could care less. Here, here, this is the student, the, the uh, teachers union is supporting this. And what they're doing is they're turning schools into blue cities where the <laughs> teachers unions are basically now the, the mayors of the schools. And they're saying that if you're suffering from trauma, what is trauma? Kids today think, it, you know, if they got shortchanged five cents, it's trauma. Everything is traumatic to them. But what's going on is they said, look, students of color uh, are suspended suspended more than more often than whites and we don't want it to suspend them that much so we're going to define deviancy down where uh, we have an uncivilized barbaric society that keeps devolving until we reach the lowest of the low where everybody's in agreement and we get the same level of punishment it, it, it makes no sense to me all they're doing is they're using color as an excuse to get away with everything but to me, this isn't an anti-racist approach. This is just racism blatantly. But it also is bigotry towards people of color where you are simply framing it that because they are a person of color that they can't meet a certain standard or behave in a certain way because of their color. So you have to give them a pass. And we've seen this now with criminals where they're allowing people to just commit crimes because they're black or a person of color because they're struggling or they need to feed their families. So they're going out and you're allowed to steal up to items less than a thousand dollars without being punished. And you just see these places getting ransacked over and over again. You have these children in schools who are getting away with not having to meet standards that allow them to continue in their future because they're getting lower scores and they're, uh, you know, a person of color. So they're saying it's unfair for them. So, so we're going to lower those standards and still push them through. Yet, you know, you see these teens in waves of crime in Chicago, Baltimore, uh, DC, there's a huge influx. And again, with the kids in Portland, where we've seen the articles written where <laughs> They don't need to prove their mastery simply because it harms people of color. Like the hard bigotry towards people of color is is crazy, especially the black community. And I don't understand how they can be rah rah rahing behind this and allowing this to happen. And listen, kids will be kids. There are good kids, there are bad kids. But simply because you are a bad kid doesn't mean you have to allow them to continue that bad behavior. You need to set discipline where discipline is needed. Now, I don't think it's just, obviously, that the teachers have to be fully responsible for the discipline of these students. But while they are in the care and the presence of the teachers, it is their duty to uphold those disciplinary standards. Now, regardless if more black kids are getting disciplined at a higher rate than the white kids or the Spanish kids or the, you know, Asian kids, the fact of the matter is the discipline still needs to be there. And the, the parents also need to be informed of these issues. Now, as I said, I believe a lot of these issues probably stem from home. Uh, as we've talked about before, a lot of kids nowadays they have no respect for their parents. They don't have respect for authority. They think that they can just do whatever they want. And as this woman says, you give a kid an inch, they want to take a mile, as always. My biggest problem with this is that it incentivizes bad behavior. 100%. And, you know, it normalizes abuse in the classroom by minors. It also normalizes intense chaos and distraction. So then what is the recourse for the families whose children are not learning what they should be learning because they are allowing some, because of whatever category they fall in, uh, diversity or otherwise, to get special treatment in terms of just wear yourself out with that. We're not going to punish you as hard. But what, who, who's going to protest on behalf of the people who are not going to learn? Their kids are not going to learn in the classroom because they're going to let the, the little hellions get away with everything because they check the right box. And kids are kids. That's what they do. If you, if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile because they're kids. It doesn't matter what they look like. And those are the simple facts of the matter and facts of life. If people know that they can get away with a certain behavior or a certain thing, they're going to continue exploiting it. And that's why we have rules and laws. As I mentioned before, the kids in D.C., they have 9, 10, 11 previous carjackings, armed robberies, yada, yada. And they're only 12, 13. But there's no recourse 
repercussion for what they're doing so they're just continuing to get away with them and now in school you're going to lower the disciplinary repercussion for a bad behavior like it just does not make sense but again this is just my opinion love to hear from you guys what do you guys think about this leave your comments in the comment section below and i will catch you guys on the next one thanks so much